I think that we could study the life of Jesus for eternity and still be discovering new truths about the effects of what he did. So what I'm going to give you here probably, actually I know it is an, an exhaustive list, but it is a list of three important ways that Jesus puts us back in Eden. It's a list of the effects of the cross. I call it the because of Jesus list. <laughs> Simple as that. First, because of Jesus, you no longer need to make sacrifices for your sins. Hebrews 10, it says that Jesus' blood did the work for the forgiveness of sins once and for all. Verse 12, it says, But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. When Jesus was sacrificed on the cross, he said it is finished because the work for the forgiveness of sins was done. Then he sat down. There was no more work for him to do. It was complete. And there's no more work for you to do other than believe that he did it. Too many of us Live as if we still have to pay something, sacrifice something for our faults and failures. And we do it through self-deprecation. We beat ourselves up. We do it through spiritual disciplines. It can even be done through prayer and fasting. We do it through giving and good works. Not all of those practices are bad. Prayer, fasting, obviously those are good things. No spiritual discipline, none of it, can cleanse sin. If animal sacrifices couldn't do it, your self-deprecating thoughts, the way you talk about yourself, how much you beat yourself up, how much you do, none of that's going to work to cleanse you. But you can put yourself at rest today because if you believe in Jesus, then you are cleansed and there's not another sacrifice to be made. There's no more need to appease God. Now you live in His delight in the state of Him being permanently pleased with you. That's living in Eden. Second, because of Jesus, there's nothing you need to fix. Now, as I said a few weeks ago, I'm not saying that there's nothing that wouldn't be beneficial for you to fix or adjust in your life. But there's nothing God requires of you in order to remain in good standing with Him. Why? Because as Romans 3.22 assures, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And I love how Paul goes on to say, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Belief in Christ, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, is the only litmus test for the faith. I, faith. I know so many of us these days, we want to put all of these other things. Oh, you got to think this way. you got to act this way. you got to be this way in order to be a real Christian. Paul says you are made right by your faith in Christ and it's true for whoever you are. Doesn't get much simpler than that. This was huge for me to finally get. And I suspect this revelation will bring freedom to some of you too. As I very vulnerably share in my book, Shut Up Devil, because of the rejection and shame and insecurity I faced in my childhood, when I came to really know the Lord, even though I had heard that He loved me, and I loved Him for it, I couldn't accept that that was it. In those days, I believed there was just so much wrong with me. And people told me that Jesus had the power to fix everything that I thought was wrong with me, as long as I cooperated with Him. So I thought it was just the goal of the Christian life to do my part to allow Jesus to fix me. And if I wasn't fixed, then I guess I haven't done my part. I guess there's more to do. But here's the thing. Jesus did fix everything wrong with me. And he fixed everything wrong with you too because he removed your wrong nature and he replaced it with his right nature. He literally put you in right standing with God because of your belief. Now there's nothing you have to do to live up to any standard. Christ writes you despite you. Okay. 
Third, because of Jesus, there's nothing to prove or earn. There's no need for striving. Colossians 2.10, love this verse. So you are also complete through your union with Christ. I hear from so many people who think that they must essentially talk God into blessing them. And I was there for at least the first decade of my faith. In truth, about every spiritual discipline I did was either to try to fix myself or to convince God I was worthy of something. Look, God, I read my Bible for 30 minutes a day. Can you bless me now? Look, God, I gave some money today. Can you promote me now? I was doing all of this to try to earn peace and acceptance from Him rather than doing out of the overflow of peace and acceptance that I already had with Him. It's not wrong to do things. You just don't have to earn things from God. You do them not for peace and acceptance. You do them out of the acceptance that God has given you already. So please hear me. You don't have to talk God into loving you because God is love. You don't have to earn intimacy with God because as a believer, He's in you. He can't get any closer and He's not going to go any further. You don't have to prove why God should bless you. The Bible says that in Christ all of God's promises are yes and amen. Love what Ephesians 1.3 says, that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing because we are united with Christ. God designed us to live in and from His delight. It's where we were placed in the beginning, His original intention. It's the state in which our bodies are programmed to be most effective. It's what Jesus died to restore us to. And so many Christians still struggle and fail more than, you know, maybe what our humanity would require. But we consistently struggle and fail much more than we'd ever have to because we're weakened by a pressure that no longer exists. It doesn't have to exist. So please let this be your takeaway. If you've said yes to Jesus, you are already at peace with God. You are already forgiven by God. You are already accepted by God. The only goal of the Christian life is to rest in the relationship of God being your father and you being his child. That's freedom. That's Eden. That's the divine design. Hey, there's a secret strategy against your mind, and it's what's behind your battles with fear, insecurity, guilt, shame, even depression. After more than a decade in ministry and plenty of personal experience, I discovered that the devil deceptively uses truth to get you to swallow lies that are at the heart of your most toxic emotions and behaviors. He'll alert you to something that is true about you, maybe a weakness or something you fell to. Then he'll interpret what that means. Things like nobody will love you or even God is mad at you. Do you see it? By using something that really did happen, the devil then moves into the realm of hypothetical doom and gloom, often without you even realizing it. Cue the battles. That's why as I explore in my book, Shut Up Devil, the path to true freedom really is all in your mind. Seriously, as you get your beliefs aligned with God's truths, everything else starts to get in line. Get Shut Up Devil today at kylewinkler.org or wherever books are sold.